Yeah, this is our ninth Antenna Palooza event, and this time around we wanted to do something a little bit different. The uh, previous events we'd had wire antennas and verticals and so forth, but now we wanted to try something that wouldn't go into the normal backyard. And we looked around, and the curtain array is something that historically had been very important for antennas commercially and around the world, but you don't see them much anymore, mostly because they're too big. We thought we'd, thought we'd try it out here. But they were a little bit difficult. The, the traditional curtain array had um, 100 metre tall towers and lots of guy ropes and it took a lot of resources to make and we weren't going to be able to do that so we thought we'd make a baby one and to do that we needed still some pretty high poles and the curtain arrays really are just a matrix of dipole antennas with the reflectors and there's a couple of different ways of doing them and we had some choices to make so what we went with was eight dipole antennas for the 20 meter band and these were folded dipoles which gives us a bit of a different feed point impedance and makes it a little bit easier to stack them uh, one above the other in a, a wire formation and behind each dipole about two meters behind each dipole there's another wire element about five percent longer and uh, that's the reflector so it's behaving like uh, a whole bunch of two element beams all of these are phased together into a common feed line and uh, into the rig so what we've got here i'll just walk over to the antenna if you want to follow me over uh, what we've got is oh, pointing into the sun a little bit we've got two poles 18 meters tall and they're plastic they're pvc pipe 90 mil pvc arranged in a triangle and they're six meters long when you buy them from the plumbing suppliers and we've stacked them three high and that's what you've seen in the background of these pvc pipes stacked three high I'll try to get it so we're not firing into the sun uh, and uh, there's pulleys at the top and after the first stage and the entire antenna is hoisted up from that so that when um, it's ready to be used it can be hoisted up if there are changes needed we can lower the whole thing so the two poles are largely independent of the antenna um, i'll just move under the antenna itself and show what it looks like at the feed point just under here we're under one of the dipoles and I'll tug on my feed line a little bit and bring it down um, we've got a an open feeder going to the top dipole and there's a one-to-one -one ratio balance which takes it from the uh, unbalanced coaxial feed line to the balanced feeder for this dipole and the one that's above and it goes up through a, a small twist there's a little bit of a spacer that's come away there but it's not too much of a worry one of the other challenges we had is because the poles are 60 meters apart and they're only plastic we couldn't put on too much tension and and pull the antenna tight so really we needed a third pole in the center which we hadn't planned on so we've cheated and uh, we've just put up the boom lift for that uh, hence we're uh, holding up the center of the dipole with a with a cherry picker that you don't normally use for that but it was the easy way out at least it gets it up in the air now on the scale of curtain arrays normally the bottom would be higher a half wavelength off the ground we're barely a quarter wavelength off the ground here but that was getting logistically difficult um, we did some modeling with the help of another amateur and um, the radiation angle is affected it would have a lower angle of radiation which is desirable for a, a hf antenna if it was up higher but not by much there's only a couple of degrees in it so we're happy to go with what we've got and it seems to be holding together um, that pole there to the to my left that one came down um, about two weeks before our event we had a another storm front that came through that we couldn't withstand and it smashed it um, we glued it back together again and now that pole was about 400 mils shorter than what it started out but at least we got it back up in time and it's guyed every 60 degrees so there's a lot of rope uh, across this entire antenna we've used about 350 meters of wire and about 1.2 kilometers of rope uh, and mostly it's working the antenna be, or the pole behind us has got a few kinks in it and that was from some of the hot weather we had over Christmas and the hot um, north winds that tried to uh, push it over but we hung in there the other challenges was keeping the cows out from around the antennas because cows love chewing on guy ropes so I had to set up an electric fence around that <laughs> and uh, we've chuffed the cows up into the top paddock uh, where they can't get into any strife for this event and they're probably getting a bit fractious but they're going to have to stay in there another couple of days 
um, that's probably all we needed to know immediately about the antenna, but they do have a, a lot of gain. It's probably in the order, theoretical, of about 17 uh, dBi, or about um, 14 or 15 dB over just one regular dipole. That's the kind of gain figures we're looking at. It is oriented across the paddock uh, with the reflector on our right hand side, driven elements on the left, which means we're pretty much beaming towards Europe. And that's what we're hoping to try and get. Uh, and that's a bit of a wrap up for what we've done here. And now the guys are in there having a bit of a go to see what they can pick up. But conditions vary on 20 meters, it's very fickle. And if it was like last night, it didn't pick up properly until about 11 o'clock at night. But um, we'll give it a good shot. And just one question, why, why beam to short path to Europe? Um, short path to Europe, uh, we could have gone long path. There's not that much in it. If you look at Google Earth, it's about um, 9,000 kilometers that way short path and it's about 11,000 kilometers that way long path. Um, we could have gone either way, frankly. And uh, uh, we just kind of flipped the coin and went short path. 